Good evening, YouTube. It's AC Dodd here again. Uh, welcome to the last part. That's part three of the Forge or Chuck Key build. Um, in this part, we're going to look at uh, continuing where we left off. Uh, so a little bit of thread tapping. Uh, and then we're going to go into the heat treatment and the final uh, part of the Chuck Key build. So um, if you want to know how I do it, please stay tuned. Okay, now we're just gonna tap the thread out. I could have done it in the lathe, but it's just as easy for me to do it here. So this is, uh, we're putting an M6 thread, M6 by one in the end for a grub screw so that uh, we can um, lock in the Tommy bar. Okay. Just before we get into the heat treatment side of things, one of the things I want to talk to you about is uh, the importance of heat treatment. A lot of people make tools uh, at home, and also a lot of tools are made nowadays um, that are sold in the uh, the aftermarket uh, uh, car parts area, where they're just made cheaply and there's no consideration given to the uh, heat treatment or the material spec, etc. So. One of the things I'll urge you to do is if you're going to make a tool, uh, there's three things you need to consider, really. Uh, obviously, the design of the tool. Uh, you also need to consider uh, the material spec of the tool. Um, and you also need to uh, consider hardness or heat treatment. Um, in terms of steel tools, what we're talking about here with this uh, um, lathe chuck key, uh, it has to do a couple of things. So looking at the original chuck key, uh, it's got the only hardened bit on it is the square drive at the end. Um, so that's done for two reasons. Now, hardness uh, is, is related to um, the strength of the material. Uh, and it also has the property of uh, reducing the wear on the item. So if we was to use that chuck key exactly as it was, uh, it would end up uh, rounding the corners off of the uh, hexagon drive. Uh, and it would obviously wear out quite quickly. So... Uh, one of the reasons why we're doing this, or the main reason I should say, why we're actually going to harden this one, is to make that tool uh, put up with the stresses and the loads that are going to be put on that hexagon drive, su such that it will last a lifetime. So um, one of the things that uh, you need to do uh, when you make tools is to consider this, because if you don't consider it, uh, you'll end up making uh, a tool that won't last very long or wear out quickly or just fail in use. So... Uh, the reason why I'm adding this here is just to bring that to your attention that, uh, you know, knowing about heat treatment and the right materials will make uh, a pretty mediocre tool excellent. Um, so one of the tricks in engineering is if you know about heat treatment of steels, uh, you know, you can use the, uh, the cheapest material, use the best heat treatment and, uh, you know, that's how people make money. Uh, you know, save money on materials, but then, you know, use that expertise uh, to, to actually make the cheaper steel uh, do what you want by changing the hardness and obviously the strength of materials. Uh, in the case of what we're talking about here, uh, I'm only using flame hardening, which is, you know, a very basic form of, of heat treatment. So I'm using a bit higher spec material, uh, which I know that works well with, with flame hardening. So um, one of the things I'll urge you to do is to uh, don't go straight into you know just heating and quenching your product your, your project what you're going to need to do is actually do some experimentation because at the end of the day uh what i'm not trying to do here is make something glass hard because if i did it would snap like a carrot so uh, i'm actually not trying to achieve full hardness uh, and that's why i'm using hardening and then tempering back uh, and that ensures uh, a, a toughness as well as a reasonable level of hardness to put up with the, the wear and also have the strength to uh, withstand the application. So anyway, uh, that's enough of me talking. So uh, let's crack on and see how I go about hardening and tempering this tool. Next stage is uh, we're going to flame harden the end. So uh, you may have wondered what that is in the back, but uh, I use a little process um, called uh, pillar drill quenching. So what I mean by that is uh, I'll mount this in a pillar drill uh, and then obviously heat the end and then use the pillar drill to rotate it. And then once it's at the right temperature, I can dip that straight into uh, my quenching, which in this case is just warm water. Um, 
and uh, by experience that gives me a particularly good quench on the end so uh, without further ado let's crack on okay so here's my setup I've got the pillar drill got the item uh, mounted in the chuck uh, on the spigot and there's the water and you can see in terms of the water it's only about an inch from the end and that enables me to pull the handle and just quench when I'm ready. Uh, the idea here is there's no, uh, there's minimal delay between heating and quenching so I'll achieve the maximum hardness. Uh, and I'm not using cold water as well because I don't want to shock the material um, but water is not the ideal quenchant but it's a quenchant in my experience that will do the job so uh, that's why we're using it. The other thing for doing this as well is to just show people at home that actually you don't need a massively complicated setup, you just need to think about it. So uh, in terms of heat, I'm going to use my oxypropane torch. So uh, let's get this on. So first of all, we'll get the torch lit. And we'll start heating. Put the motor on. So when you're using oxypropane, you need to use the end of the tail because that's where the energy is. So we're just going to rotate that until we get a nice, almost carrot-like colour. Doesn't take long. And we just need to build that heat slightly. And just maintain it just for a minute or two to let to let the metal change internally. That's plenty hot enough. Just moving the torch to keep it uh, keep it at the right temperature. And then when we're ready, we'll quench. And we're ready. And quench. So torch is off. And the item is quenching nicely. So that should be cool enough to touch now. Lovely. So let's turn it off and then we'll immerse the thing completely to get rid of all the residual heat. And remember, this is still warm water. That's it. So the whole thing is now just at the temperature of the warm water. And now we can just give that a quick wipe off and see our see how hard our end has got okay so a quick check if we take our component and a file on the soft end I try and push it and it's biting in if I take our hardened end it skids straight across so that's lovely and hard now so now what we've got to do the next operation is we've just got to temper that down a little bit so that, that is not too hard so it shatters So after hardening, I've mounted it in the lathe and just give it a quick clean to get rid of all the oxidisation and the colours off it. Um, and obviously uh, uh, get it ready so we can see the colours when we uh, we come to temper. So 
what we're going to do now is I'm just going to spin it up in the lathe to show you one of the benefits of flame hardening the end of something. As you can see, that shaft runs dead straight. So the heat treatment process hasn't distorted this shaft at all. So it's a very good, uh, you know, don't overlook flame hardening. It's one of the uh, uh, one of those little jewels that you can use to uh, get a very workable hardness on a uh, special tool if you need it uh, without actually bending the shaft. Um, but you just need to get the appropriate material. So uh, we'll just get a temper on this uh, to make sure that uh, that's not too hard. And uh, a final polish and she'll be ready to assemble. Okay, what we're going to do here is indirectly heat the, uh, the tool over the flame. This will take quite a few minutes because we've got to get the tool nice and even all the way up. So, we'll just pass that backwards and forwards and put most of the heat where the bulk is. And then when that changes to the colours I'm looking for, which is uh, kind of a light blue, so it's uh, through dark blue and out to the other side, all the way over nice and evenly, then we'll just leave it to air cool. And that should just be enough to take the edge off the steel where it's been hardened and uh, reduce the stresses and make that a lovely strong tool. as you can see now it's starting to progress through the colours so that's around 210 degrees so it's a nice golden straw colour so we've just got to keep going now to get it hotter and hotter and in terms of final colours we've gone through uh, blue and we're just coming out the other side so uh, that probably just about right. We pretty much evenly heated that all the way across. So what I'm going to do now is just put that over to cool down. So it sits there to cool off. So that took about uh, 15 minutes of heating to get that uh, nice and even. Uh, and as you can see, we've got a pretty good colour all the way down. Um, obviously, I didn't need to uh, temper this end, but it's much easier uh, to, to heat the whole component um, because the trick with tempering is slowly, okay? So if you put this in a furnace, you'll be tempering over an hour. Well, I don't have a furnace, so I'll do the next best thing and I'll temper over, um, you know, uh, a good number of minutes. And I find using the indirect method like this with a bar and then heating the heating the um, the underside of the bar rather than the component, this will help me spread the heat. Um, and I've basically brought that up to the tempering temperature uh, to, to soften the end. But because of the material is already at 30 Rockwell, this tempering temperature is not high enough to soften that any further. So um, the only thing you'll have is a heat affected zone somewhere up the shaft here, which will be a, a, a soft section. But that doesn't matter because the shaft itself is, is more than big enough to deal with the uh, uh, the torque that this is going to be uh, used on it. Uh, and obviously the end where I've hardened it will have softened a little bit, but it will still be much harder than the rest of the uh, tool. So. Um, I may even leave that colour on it because it looks quite nice uh, or I might polish it off afterwards but uh, we'll let this uh, cool down. I've been using this uh, method of tempering for a good long time now uh, and it works uh, well on, on silver steel. Um, um, it works well on, in fact it works well on a lot of steel so uh, very, very happy with it. Um, you don't need anything clever. Uh, obviously a furnace does make a huge difference um, but not everyone's got a furnace or can afford to run a furnace. I certainly haven't got room for one, although I'd love one. But in this case, uh, I, I just use um, uh, a blowtorch and uh, the indirect heating method, and it works for me. So here we are, I've got the finished tool. Uh, Tommy Bar installed. Uh, she's all ready to use. 
Um, I'm not going to uh, do a little video showing it being used because I'm actually going to do a video once I have used it uh, and give you an update later in the year uh, when it's when it's actually got some mileage under its belt, so to speak, and it's actually been used in anger. But uh, the tool's finished and she's uh, all ready to use. Okay, hopefully you found that useful. Um, just gives you some idea of the sort of thing I have to do when I make tools and do various things, uh, including stuff I make for engines. So uh, in due course, no doubt, there'll be other videos where I have to do that sort of thing again. Anyway, as ever, uh, please like and subscribe and share. And I will see you soon. Thank you very much.